So we're here at the CS 2016, and uh, you're the Cody team? Uh, we yeah, are. we are. Four, four of them, anyway. So what do you do? Uh, I'm Nate. I'm a community manager, project manager. I do a bunch of different stuff. Uh, should I introduce everybody? Yeah, introduce those okay. guys. This what is they Rick do? here. He's a, a software developer. He does add-ons, Python stuff. All the add-on stuff you want, he's pretty good at it. Keith here is business developer guy for Cody. Uh, and over there is Martin Kaiser, who is uh, the release manager and does a bunch of other stuff. So how big is Cody? Um, Software-wise or yeah. people? Or users? In success or? and uh, how awesome, how many people are you, uh, how, what's going on with Cody? Man, that is a hard thing to come up with. It's, uh, it's really awesome. It's yeah. so fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're pretty sure, well, we know a few stats about users. We know that we're at about 3 million Google Play downloads or active Google Play users uh, on Android. Um, we know that in terms of overall users, we it's kind of hard to get a guesstimate because basically what we're doing is we're counting downloads of add-ons and just guessing from there, but that number's somewhere around 10 million. Um, and uh, in terms of developers, they're about 35 to 50 really active developers, um, and then hundreds of people who just submit patches every month. So how do uh, these 30 to 50 developers, how do they get paid? They, they don't. don't. They don't get paid? <laughs> no. Really? Is that okay? Yeah. Well, that's what open source is. This is how open source works. So it's open source free software? Yes. Yeah. We're a nonprofit organization, and uh, it's 100% volunteer ran. With that said, a few of our team members have been able to go get jobs in the industry uh, working on Cody full time. Yeah. So we have a few that have done part-time contract jobs, and we also have uh, probably a half a dozen over the years that have that have had full-time employment based off Cody. But that has nothing to do with the organization. That's just a byproduct from them being good developers and for them working on stuff. And they work on stuff so much that commercial organizations have picked them up and wanted to use them in their own product. So these 30, 50 guys are the top guys for our media player, hardware acceleration, all that stuff? Yeah, in the world. They do all the, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, and I mean, for, I'm sure that they're in the world. Hey, they're the people who have been willing to donate their time for the cause of spreading open source software. Some the of world. the guys work for Intel. Some work for the. No. Was that a secret? Oh, how does it work? No. We don't no? have any Intel guys, but hey, yeah. if there's any Intel guys out there, we would love some Intel guys. Yeah. So yeah. my website is ARM devices. Yes. So uh, do you work on every ARM device? Yes. Um, modern ones. I mean, there's there's a certain point where ARM chipsets are just so old that we don't run on them because we're a, we're primarily a native platform, so it takes. A pretty significant, uh, uh, in terms of power, chipset to, to run Cody. We need we need open open GLES 2.0 or higher, as a minimum. Uh, we were out on the Raspberry Pi because of the hardware decoder that's in it, and so pretty much we need you need to have a decent hardware decoder. Um, we work on basically any ARM chipset, but the, honestly, the GPU is typically more important than the ARM chipset itself because look at the Raspberry Pi; it has a very weak processor, right? But the the chipset, uh, the GPU itself is fairly powerful, and that's why you're able to do 1080p on it, and you're able to do so much in Kodi on it. But is there some issues with, like, uh, some files just don't work on some devices because the codecs are not okay? Well, so we do software decoding. So hard, we always do software decoding fallback. So in ARM systems, definitely you run into limitations with software decoding, but with the latest, um, the last few revisions of ARM chipsets, you can pretty much decode majority of the stuff in software. I've been specifically working on the um, Apple TV 4 port, and their ARM uh, dual core is so powerful that everything is done in software decoding. Everything from 1080p, um, MPEG-2, to all the um, uh, H.264 stuff, it's all software. But if you want 4K, smooth, everything, VP9, if you want uh, H.265... That pretty much has to be in hardware. hardware. Uh, 4K, 4K these days have to be in hardware right now, right? Yeah. I'm sure in two or three years, once, if the ARM processors stay at the same, um, getting faster and faster like they have been, then maybe you can do that stuff in software, but... So, so why do people think Cody is so awesome? I really have no idea. I think it's about <laughs> the, the openness of the, the platform. And it's really customizable. So you can do whatever you want with it. What do people do? What's, uh, like, can you do everything? It's, it's crazy what people do. Like, 
every one of us probably has a different use case for it. There are developers on our team who only use it for live over the air TV because we have a, a live TV component where you hook up a TV tuner and it just works that way. There are people who literally only use it for music these days, which I didn't even, I mean, I knew there was music in it, but I've never used it for that. Um, and then, of course, there are the people who do things like rip DVDs or stream. Uh, I, I, from what I understand, Cody's evidently a great Twitch streamer for game viewers. I had no idea about this, but suddenly somebody told me about this lately. And so, then a lot of people are doing home automation integration now. And so uh, one thing that I'd love to do at CES is go talk to some of the smart home guys just to see if they're interested in partnering with us directly on doing home automation stuff. Um, a lot, uh, we, we see videos every day of people doing stuff like putting Cody in their car, putting Cody on pretty much any device that you possibly can. So I think a lot of it is the freedom and flexibility that we've built a platform that allows you as a user to be able to customize and do whatever you want with it. How's that possible? Because it's Android, right? No. And you do an app, and no. you have an app in Android. So, so we do, but it's not Android. It's native. So it's, it's native. ran so on it's Linux. Native code Android. Uh, yeah. So it's native code, and then we happen to port to Android as well. So Android is just one of the many platforms we support. We run on every platform. Are you one like one of the uh, most hardcore native code Android apps? Yes. Probably. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Well, we can't prove that, right? <laughs> there might be some yeah. games out there that are better. We are the we are the largest world's largest open source multimedia project in existence. And we are most likely, we are definitely the largest open source multimedia project on Android and the largest native code project on Android. Um, most of the other ones are all closed source, so we can't prove any of that. How does it work to do a native code Android app? Uh, you, it was weird. Uh, the, the, very first, the very first build that we had on Android, it was literally all C code plus one line of Java. <laughs> and actually, the first few builds were that way. Yeah. Originally, because of Bionic, if um, Bionic is uh, Android's replacement of libc, we actually couldn't use the original NDK. Uh, we used a third-party NDK to actually do the compilation for the first, I'd say, year. And then we finally got it compiling on the NDK. Once the NDK got up to speed and more, more stuff got integrated, more of the libc calls got integrated into Bionic, then we finally were able to actually do native compilations and now we've been doing it for a while and so and the nice thing is I'm sure other people have copied the build system that we've done because we're all open source and so the the biggest thing that we want is we want to be on any platform that is possible so everything that's possible out there so um, that's why Android's there that's why we even have iOS builds and you can sideload it on iOS which of course is ARM as well so Android is famous for these launchers and stuff uh, could people kind of like do launches with Cody and change the UI um, well, they can change the UI anyways, right? Yeah. So you can always change the. So we have skins that you can change the like UI the as much as you want. Yeah, yeah. So you can make it look completely different. Yeah, we have probably at least 15 skins at any time, but definitely 30, like a lot that are being in progress and being actively developed. But also, you can use it as a launcher, but. The one thing that you lack is you lack the ability to have the settings exposed from Android. So the problem is, is as you've probably seen with other launchers, you have the launcher settings and then you have the Android settings, that's another screen. And what some people have done to overcompensate for that is add some of the Android settings into their own launcher. We will never do that because we want right specific um, per platform functionality in our own settings screen. So you would have to have another, it, it, Essentially, Android settings would become an app that you would run. So that's the that's some of the complications with building a multi-platform um, program like ours. Couldn't you like kind of like become an Android launcher and like become a, control more of the Android experience? All of the so besides the settings, pretty much all the Android experience you could run. So you can run apps. You can under programs on Android, you can go and you can launch apps, and when you close that app it will load back up to Cody. So it works as that today. But we won't put put in the work to add settings into our settings, for example, because that will taint the experience of Cody being multi-platform, right? And so we, our focus is never to be a launcher on, on Android. With that said, if a company came, came along, wrote a skin, and wrote add-ons to do that, we would not be against it in any way. And they're more than welcome to do that. So you that. call it add-ons, right? Yeah. People yeah. install the add-ons, it's not apps. 
Correct. So it's quite different from Android apps. Correct. Right. right? Yeah. What's different uh, about it compared to an Android app? Well, two. I mean, there are two big things. Uh, Android apps are actual binary applications. They're you know compiled and and all of that. While uh, uh, Kodi add-ons are just Python plugins. They're they're just a series of codes that you don't have to compile at any point. That just run. Um, that's, so that's the big difference. Now, I don't know, one, one thing to make clear, Kodi can act as a launcher both for add-ons, for Kodi add-ons meant for Kodi, but it can also launch uh, Android apps. It does launch Android yeah, apps. Yeah, so you just go to the programs and, and they're both listed there. All right, and uh, once you launch Kodi, it's good at kind of like quieting everything else in the system, so it uses all the performance? No, or so like not? notifications, for example, we're never going to pull in Android notifications inside of Kodi. So you'll still get the notifications that come across the screen, and it will look kind of clunky, right? There definitely is stuff that uh, third-party people can take, and they can optimize that, and they could build notifications inside of Kodi via an add-on, but we're personally never going to put that in core because that's not where our use case is and that's not what our interests are. And so, that's why stuff like Android TV doesn't have those, right? So do you think the RM ecosystem is awesome? All these uh, boxes are yeah. fantastic, right? Uh, definitely. Yes, obviously. You can obviously. buy a uh, cheap, <laughs> cheap box and run coding. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's I, great. I just recently, so so Raspberry Pi is a pretty famous ARM device, right? I just recently was playing with that $5 device of theirs that runs Kodi, and it's like, really? this is ridiculous. Really? <laughs> yeah. $5 Kodi box. Yeah, yep. yeah. So what does that mean for the world? That means more people are going to watch more media on their TVs? Sure. Hopefully. That means people can use Kodi however they want to, and there yeah. shouldn't be things like cost limitations that associate with it, right? Now that we're at a point where Android's getting standardized enough to where they have standard APIs to do hardware decoding, we hope that anybody who has desire to run Kodi, no longer there's no barrier to entry anymore. What that means for the grand scheme of things, just that we have more users out there. Us, we're not going to change from our core mission, which is making the best home theater software that we can. And that's really what Cody's about, is keeping that user experience as pure as possible and really dedicating it to the home theater experience. Beyond that, if, if we can bring that to everybody who, who desires that, that's fantastic. Right. Uh, how about uh, Popcorn Time and uh, Subcast? Is it possible to pirate in Cody, uh, people doing that? I'm people? sorry, fast, that, but I would like to uh, just know, is it, does people it work? People can do whatever they want in Cody, because Cody's work? an open ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there are add-ons for that. Yeah, we have blocked all of that stuff on our form, and we do not allow any of that stuff in our repo. And we do not encourage users to do that. But just like Windows, just like Linux in general, just like any open ecosystem, we allow the freedom of the user to be able to install anything they want. You just uh, put a URL in and it installs. Um, you download a zip file that has a repository in it, but yeah. yeah. All Same right. idea. So there's lots of stuff happening, yeah. and uh, what's in the future is even more cool, more yeah. stuff happening. More 4K support, more yeah. hardware decoding support. Um, one of happen? one of the big features we hope will be in um, a release sometime this year is Retro Player, which is uh, console gaming built inside of Kodi, and so you'll be able to do things like pause and rewind your emulated game. Fantastic, awesome! Yeah. Every console, Dreamcast and Nintendo 64. And uh, everything. Consoles that have open source emulators. Yeah. Because and again, we're completely open source, so you have to, we can only utilize what the open source ecosystem has given us, right? So if there's a Dreamcast emulator that works, we'll work hard to support that. Nice. Just one last thing. Uh, could you say what's your favorite add on? Uh, Who is? HD Home Run. HD Home Run. What yeah. does it do? So HD Home Run is a network TV tuner box, and it allows you the ability to uh, watch. Um, live TV in Kodi from any from any Kodi device. So all the Kodi devices in my house, all I have to do is load one piece of software, and I can watch live TV on that, regardless of where it's at in my network. Uh, for me, it's the Rooster Teeth add-on. It's uh, Rooster Teeth is one of those online web web video providers. I'm a big fan, big fan. <laughs> right. Cool. And you also have probably some uh, some favorites. Uh, probably YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Does it work nicely on Kodi? Uh, it plays the videos I want. It's, it's not the same experience as you have on Android, but that's the downside of uh, yeah, YouTube not letting us to. Cool. Thanks a lot for doing this awesome work. I, I, I think there's a lot of fans out there. Yeah. Right. Yep. We hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So looking forward <laughs> to what's happening in the future. Thanks.